Hi, everybody. I heard a lot of cheers over in the back. It must be my fan club back there. Thank you, guys. I'm very excited to be here. I'm very grateful that all of you took the opportunity to come and see me and the other people that are coming after me. Um, I, I only had a 1,000 words, and when I was timing out my speech, uh, I realized that it was only going to be seven minutes long, so I'm just going to say the whole thing twice so that it's a little <laughs> bit longer. I hope that's OK. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, in my house, Ashley does all the decorating. I decorated one thing in my entire house. It's a dish. It's this big, and it has a quote. It's actually my favorite quote, and it's by Ralph Waldo Emerson, and then it says, the only person that you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. The only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. The reason that I love that quote so much is because I grew up in, in Tempe, Arizona, like she said. And I remember very specifically in elementary school, I would be told very simple instructions, and I would just freeze. Because I'm a very visual learner, and I learn by doing things as well. When somebody tells me to go do something, it's very hard for me to kind of understand and grasp exactly what it is I'm supposed to be doing. I've gotten a little bit better as I got older. But this specific time, and I would remember, and I just felt so stupid when I couldn't get what they were saying. This compounded year after year after year until I believed it. I remember I had to retake quite a few classes in, in school, in high school and in college. And that also continued to make me feel a little bit inadequate, I guess you could say. And as I got older, I started to realize that I was actually not so stupid, that I was really good at certain things, especially when I dedicated my time and my energy to it. I was actually above average in some things. But then something happened as I was getting ready to go to college. I applied for a school that's actually kind of close to here. I'm not going to name any names because I'm over it now. Uh, <laughs> but because of the system that I was born into that I didn't choose but that I, I was in, I, I didn't get accepted. All my, my best friends were going to go there, and my, some of my family members had gone there. I, re I really wanted to go, but I, I couldn't because of my test scores and some of my grades. And it, it really hurt me because I was being told no when I had a lot of drive and I had a lot of passion for what I was doing and I wanted to do it. We're going to fast forward a little bit. I ended up going to a better school, uh, Arizona State. And I graduated. I learned how to learn a little bit better, so I got better grades. But I only got offered a job by one company. So I took it, and I was very excited. But something happened. About a year in, I started talking to my bosses and said, hey, I don't want to be an assistant store manager forever. I want to be a store manager, because I want to do what you're doing, and I want to, I want to progress. And they went like this. <laughs> no. And I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean, no? And they said, there is no way that you will become a store manager at least for eight years. Guess what? That's right now. That means I would still be an assistant store manager. This photo on the left is me after I got my first job. I don't even recognize that guy. I don't even know who he is. Because I decided when they told me no, that I was not going to be who they told me that I was supposed to be because of my grades, because of where I was born, what I look like, my financial circumstances growing up. I, I decided no. I'm going to become the person that I decide to be. So what I did was I, I looked around me, and I continued to work there. But I looked around me, and I, I created my own opportunity. And that's when I left my job. And I was crazy because I, I didn't think that I was going to be able to do it. But I remember very, very vividly one day, Ashley, I, I came home from work like this. 
And Ashley sits me down and she looks me right in the eyes. I'm emotional. Are any guys in here emotional other than me? I know, I know Andrew is. <laughs> we, we are emotional together. But I, I feel this. This is something that, it's not just me. This is everybody at some point. Everybody in this room can relate to this story. She sat me down and she looks me in the eyes and she goes, you're not stuck. You're not. You're very capable and you can do something else. And I thought, oh my gosh, I, I have no idea what else I would do. What am I supposed to do? So over the next couple of years, I developed my own job, basically. I left and I, I started to do something else. And I was very grateful for that moment. I worked very hard to become that guy. That was me last summer, speaking in front of 2,000 people. It was amazing. And we're going to do something at the end of this speech today that I did there. So everybody's going to have to stand up at the end, and we're going to scream really loud. I'm just letting you know it's going to happen. I need your help. <laughs> okay. And for the guy that's like looking at me like, no, I'm not saying it's you, sir. I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> for the guy that's thinking, or you hiding behind her, you're going to do it too. So in order for me to get there, I had to make a decision of who I wanted to be. And you guys have to make that decision too. Maybe you already did. Maybe you can help somebody else, but maybe you haven't. Maybe you don't have somebody like I had that sat you down and said, I believe that you can do this. But guess what? You do right now. Me. I believe that you can do it. I believe that you can be what you want to be. You just have to decide. And you can do it. So there's three things that I want to share with you that you guys can take home with you. And when you think about these things, you can practice and practice and practice until you become that person that you want to be. This doesn't mean that you need to lose weight or gain weight or change your lifestyle or, or get a better haircut. Thank goodness I, I did that and changed my wardrobe. Why did you, why did you let me wear that? Um, that must have been when the month I shopped for myself. So the first thing that I did and that I, I encourage you guys to do is that I want you to cut out distractions. And for a second, I want you to think in your head, what is your number one distraction? Don't say it out loud. What is your number one distraction? <coughs> if you guys are like me, and I bet that a lot of people are like me, this is my number one distraction. Is anyone else like that? This is also my number one tool, but it's my number one distraction. And I've helped a lot of people that have had this as their number one distraction too, and I'm gonna put you through a little exercise. It's very simple. If you want to get rid of this as your number one distraction, you have to do it, but you don't have to do it. This is what I want you to do. Tomorrow, starting tomorrow, don't touch your phone until after you've gotten ready for the day. If you work from home, get dressed, if you don't usually. Not, not saying you don't, I, I don't know, maybe you do. Eat breakfast and then look at your phone for no more than 20 minutes. Then you work, and you go do what you're supposed to be doing so that you can start to become the person that you've decided to be. And then after you've eaten lunch, you can look at your phone again for 20 more minutes. Then don't touch it again until before you have dinner or after the workday is over. 20 more minutes again, put it away for the night. As I've done this with people and as you do it, your life is going to transform instantly. Because you are in charge of who you are becoming. The second thing is, and I, I want to ask if you guys have ever felt this, have you guys ever been to a wedding or to a dance? And when you go and your song comes on, you know what it is. I don't, I don't know what it is. You know, you know what your song is. Mine is probably uh, Snap Your Fingers by Little John. But if that song comes on, 
oh man, I just, the energy enters my body and I, it's over. It's over. When you hear your song, you get into the circle that's automatically created for you and you enter the circle and everybody's like, I didn't know that Eric knew how to dance like this. What is he doing? Is, is he for real? Is he going to do this right now? Brian, did you, see, did you see that Eric's in the middle of the circle? What is he about to do? I know, Andrew, I saw. I, I don't know what's going on either. Okay, so then he's there. And then all of a sudden, the, the past two months that Eric has been spending for three hours a day in front of the mirror practicing the floss is about to pay off. <laughs> he's there. He hits it. And boom! He just goes. And everybody goes crazy. Everybody goes crazy. He just won life. Have you guys ever had that experience? Maybe not quite like, or you've seen somebody do it for sure. So then you're going home. It's just, you won. You won life. You go home. You check your Instagram and your Snapchat. And you're like, okay, let's see who posted about this. And then all of a sudden your excitement turns to just like a cold sweat and panic because you realize that you actually look like your dad when you dance. <laughs> if there's dads in here, I'm sorry, but sorry. And then you frantically tell them, please delete this. I love to box. I, the best thing for me to get better at boxing is to film myself and watch how I do after. I learn more watching myself and understanding and knowing what the trainer has told me to do than I do any other way. Because when you can pull yourself out of your own life and your own situation and you can see what you're actually doing, then you're going to see where you need to improve, right? So that's what I want you to do. I want you to pull yourself back and look at what you're creating. What are you spending your time doing? How can you make it better? And then the next day, that's what you do. You work better on it. The third thing, and this is a very simple thing, you have to live intentionally. Living intentionally means that every morning, whether you want to meditate or you want to go for a stroll or whatever it is, you have a purpose. I don't know what your purpose is supposed to be tomorrow, but I know that tomorrow every one of us has an opportunity to live with intention. Today, my intention is going to be different than it is tomorrow because I'm here and so are you. If you live intentionally, you won't waste any time, and you will see that type of a transformation, too. This, this isn't just a physical transformation for me. I have had a spiritual, mental, and emotional transformation, too. Big time. I, it doesn't matter if... You grew up in a place where the income is low or high. Or you were born into systems that you didn't create that tell you that you're going to be a doctor because you got a 4.0 or you're going to go clean garbage trucks for the rest of your life because you had a C or a D average. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how smart you are, how funny you are, how cool you are. What matters is if you believe that you can do it, and if you decide to be the person that you want to become, thank you.